Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video we're going to talk about choosing your paint color to your vintage Volkswagen. Do you go vintage? Do you go modern? I'm going to show you the steps on what I do to select my paint color. Let's get to it. <laughs> so choosing the color to your vintage Volkswagen could be the most exciting, if not the most exciting moment in the restoration process but at the same time it could be kind of stressful as well because there's a lot of people that email me that say Chris I can't decide what color I want to go with do I stick with the original color do I go with another color from that year do I pick a color a couple years before or a couple years after what do you recommend so I'm going to tell you what I do and the steps that I take to choosing a color I've done this for over you know 15 years already picking colors for my bugs I do have an art background so I do have an eye for color combinations and what looks good and what doesn't look good. So I'm going to discuss that with you. Before we get going, please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And I'm going to be bringing you content like this each and every week. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And also for the price of a cup of coffee, if you could throw us a uh, PayPal donation, I got a link uh, below this video in the description where you guys could throw us a couple bucks to help keep this content going. Keep coming out here every week to give you tips and tricks to keep your bug alive. Guys, also do not forget, hashtag classic giveaway Kaffir Lab. We're gonna be picking five lucky winners with those vintage keychains that I uh, did a video on last week. So please uh, consider going down below, following Kaffir Lab on uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram. And hashtag classic giveaway we're going to probably be picking the five lucky winners next week the first week december 2020. so where are we picking the colors for the bugs i'm going to get behind the camera now and i'm going to show you what i do to pick the color to my vintage volkswagen hey guys check it out another kaffir lab product here do not forget this is black friday week thanksgiving i hope everyone's happy and healthy happy thanksgiving 2020 black friday deals guys are on kafferlab.com go check it out but check out these horn buttons these are custom horn buttons that they are producing really cool i mean that almost looks evil <laughs> but i do love the wolfsburg crest the badge here they got a lot of these horn buttons guys go to their website go check it out but uh, i don't know if you guys have ever seen how you pop one of these in let's grab uh i like the wolfsburg crest let's come over to my 61 beetle here let me show you what i do it's pretty simple to take the horn button off as you can see here i just kind of get in here with my fingers but if yours is kind of tough to get into I just get my fingernails behind the button and I pull it out. Sometimes there might be a little stubborn, so you have to get in there with maybe a little flat plastic implement. I wouldn't use a screwdriver just because, you know, the metal can crack the button from the, uh, the screwdriver itself. So, um, yeah, here's the standard horn button. This is the steering wheel. That's very common from 1960 up into 1971. So a uh, very common button. You can grab this horn button. To work with any beetle in this time period and then it's pretty simple so that has a spring in there and there's a the spring up top so i usually start by inserting the spring into the ring right and then i just push up on that spring to get the button in and that's it pretty cool guys go check out kafferlab.com and pick up one of these horn buttons again black friday deals november 2020 Okay, so here's a 1955 that we are working on for a client. Ragtop Beetle, guys. One of the last three-fold Ragtop Beetles produced. And this is a late model uh, 55, so no semaphores in America. And it has the uh, bullet front turn signals that you see there. So my client here opted to go for a vintage color. This is my 61. I went with a vintage color and then there's my good friend Landon that I'm uh, building his 58 one year color glacier blue and if you take a step back and look at these colors they actually look very modern this might look more vintage than the other two because the other two are metallic and when I go to car shows people are just saying to me that's not a true VW color 
And when I turn around and tell them, yes, it is they're flabbergasted <laughs> to say the least they just they don't believe me uh, because most people look at the bug and remember them from the 60s and 70s and the colors being flat pastel -y colors not metallic but metallic colors were very common in the 50s for Volkswagen Beetle so this color right here even though it is not a 61 color I chose a color from 5455 convertibles called silver granite. Okay, so that is a V-dub color. Yes, we have three coats of clear on this, so the color pops way more than what it did back in, in the 50s or the 60s, because they would have used just a one-stage paint at that time. And then the same with Landon's car over here, the one-year color of glacier blue. Um, you know it looks like a today color i see a lot of cars today with this color jaguar uh, even toyota honda they have a lot of these colors and most people just overlook them because they're common cars from today they're present day cars but when it's thrown on a beetle um, it just looks awesome with the curves but this was a one-year color glacier blue and uh, again people think that it's they are not beetle colors but they are and the proof is in the pudding it's all on the web so i'm going to go over uh, show you on the internet how I find these colors so but yeah this is what you have to this is what I go through a lot when it comes to restoring these cars is what colors to pick and many times I, I do try to you know sit with my client and tell them you know what's the best route to go because uh, many people are just kind of in the dark or they don't have the foresight into seeing a color combination like what we have here so this is my art background this is where I I have a good sense of color uh, when it comes to combining and for me a beetle is a character and how do I want my beetle to dress when he's gonna head outside and I want them to stand out I want there to be good character and color contrast um, so rule of thumb what I usually do is if I'm gonna go with a darker color like you see here I'm usually going to go with a lighter interior. Um, you know, unless you're doing some sort of a hot rod or something, if you're going with a vintage look, my rule of thumb and my success in the 15 years I've been in this business and even, you know, building cars for people and, and, and selling them in the end is that color contrast wins all the time. Pop, bubblegum look, uh, vintage look is where I've seen my most success. Uh, cars that have maybe a dark exterior and a dark interior will not do as well as a car like this that shows a lot of different contrast and colors. So now something like this Bordeaux, um, we've done this in the past and we usually go with a lighter interior as well. Maybe like a wheat interior, a light beige interior. Um, you know, I don't like pure white that's just too much so I like to kind of level it off and at the same time it still looks vintage it still looks like it's period so that's my rule of thumb and that's where I've seen the most success again you could do whatever you want but in the end if you want say a good return on investment God forbid down the line you have to sell the car you know don't always think of yourself when it comes to restoring the car I know it's a huge element but in the end, you want, um, I think, of mass appeal. And I've noticed this when I go to car shows. The first thing people say when, they go, when I go to a car show is people look at the color and the contrast and the compliments that I get on my vehicles. And I studied body language growing up when I was a filmmaker and a writer. I had to write visually in my screenplays. So I've taken that skill and I look at the body language to many ongoers at car shows. And over and over and over again, all I hear from my cars is fabulous color combination, remarkable color combination. That is awesome. So yeah, you got a black car here. I'm going to probably go with a lighter interior and vice versa. You got a lighter car, maybe I go with a darker interior. So if you guys remember my 70 convertible, I had it like a copper orange and I went with a darker interior because that works for me. Um, and again, people complimented on that. So 
uh, it's always good to do some homework before you know choosing your color and uh, but yeah you can pick some modern day colors that still look vintage and uh, it'll appeal to many people and you can claim and you can back it up by stating yes this was a color that was offered back then so I'm gonna get on the computer now and show you how I go about choosing my colors okay so here we are guys I'm gonna show you how I go about finding my colors for my beetles so say you have a particular beetle let's just throw a number out there um, or a year say 1965 64 something like that or even the 50s cars and you have a car that you're going to restore and you want to pick a color maybe that's period so what I do is let's just go to first I start off with wolfsburgwest.com so that's real simple www.wolfsburgwest.com so here's their main page and not many people know that they have a color swatch section on their page so if you scroll down go to color charts and then they have the color charts again they give you a little verbiage here of uh, colors and factory and literature I just go right down onto the charts and then here are the years of the Beetle and the years of the bus so if you want to do this for bus as well uh, 50 and 51 they still have not clickable um, you might have to do a little more homework there to stretch there but say you have a 64 Beetle and you click on that now here they'll give you the colors for what was offered that year all right, so you got black, pearl, white, sea blue, ruby red, anthracite, java green, Bahama blue, Panama beige, and then they do have convertible only, Yukon yellow, Brunswick blue, and poppy red. Now some of these are clickable, some are not. If you go into some other years, sometimes they do have these clickable. So I don't think they've updated this probably until like the last time they updated this was maybe like the late 90s. But uh, so say, you know, sea blue is a very popular color in 64, so you click sea blue. And then here they'll even give you the breakdown of what, you know, uh, vinyl material was was in the car originally, headliner, carpet, um, wheel rim color, that sort of thing. You can see all this information here, and they do give you some codes. Um, so C blue is L360. Now when you go to your painter, whoever you're using, and you give them this code, it's a good op good chance nothing's going to come up in their modern day system so what you need to do is then I go to the samba.com go to the samba you guys ever have never been here this is definitely a good site to go to it's a, a wonderful uh, site uh, to get information from there's a lot of ads here you can post things for sale been around for a long time so technical section and then this drop down menu comes up and then you want to go to paint and upholstery and then make sure by default type 2 of over here is high is first for the bus you want to go to type 1 for beetle if you have a type 2 bus stay right there type 3 or Gia. but type 1 click that and then they have the year breakdowns of the colors as well sometimes you might see colors in here that do not show up on the Wolfsburg West list so that's interesting uh, but what I like to do is then go all the way down to the bottom and scroll yourself all the way down and then you see all these swatches here and then based off a year so we want to head into the 60s here for that 64 color of sea blue and start looking for sea blue that's in here uh, sea blue right here number one 64 to 66 at least they give you the year breakdown so that's good and then they give you the l360 code which is right here that's the original code and then next to it here is the ppg code one two three 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 ppg is a very common paint uh, that's used with uh, most uh, body shops today um, so you can give them that PPG code now this list 
has not been updated in a while either so sometimes I give them this code and that doesn't work either so you gotta you know you have to have them fish and maybe dig a little bit in their you know they might have to do a little homework for you if, if you don't want to proceed further from here if you give them this number and they don't come up with it they can probably dig a little bit further to find the right color um, but what I then do is like say L360 that's the original code so let's copy that code so, so control C on a PC let's do a Google search again guys Google's your friend so you can punch in searches here for paint colors or whatever and there's gonna be information that pops up so let's punch in it L360 C blue see it's already coming up C blue paint and let's just put in VW and then what I usually do is PPG and then see what comes up so you have the Samba of course that comes up but then this website comes up a lot called paintref.com so C blue 66 beetle that's the same and you got paintref.com here so now you have the L360, right? So let's go back, make sure L360, C blue. And then here you go. They have the PPG pay. Now it's 12945. So that is another code that now you can give your painter to try to find. Because again, the L360, the vintage code might be tougher to find. So that's how I come across, you know, paint codes. Now they also have DuPont next to it. They have other codes as well. So this is good, you know, and then even uh, BASF. Um, so this this is really good, you know, and you have a you have a series of options here uh, to choose from, and you would go through this process to pick any color you'd like. So say you have a 64 beetle, but you want to do rather a 62 or a 60 color. Click on 60. Here's all your other colors, and again the L L they all start with L and you pick these colors again do that cross reference here so L346 then you would go to the Samba or you could just go to Google and punch this number in and go to or go to paintref.com and they'll give you a series of numbers so then you want to take that code with you to your body shop and have them do spray outs of the color because that's the next step now have them do the spray outs on a series of cards because a lot of times you might give them this color code and there's a series of colors with different shades they have darker ones lighter ones and you're gonna need to tell them to spray it out you cannot go buy a picture on the internet because your monitor might be different from another person's monitor this picture you don't know what camera they used what lens the time of day is it indoor light is it outdoor light the colors change on the monitor so you can't just say oh that car looks great I'm gonna go with that color you need to have them spray out on a card okay guys so once you have your color chosen you then take it to your body shop and tell them to give you a paint swatch or spray out on a on a card like you see here I have a series of these I mean I have a whole bunch more 15 years of collecting these things um, so you give them the code and then they spray it out here and then it's always a good idea to put the code on the back so you have it as a reference. Take this home, and then that's when you start doing some homework on your own when it comes to color combinations. You know, once you have it sprayed out, you know, then you can go back online and look at some pictures or go to car shows and see, take the swatch with you and see what other people are doing on their Beatles. And just the more homework you do, the better choice you're going to make. So always a good idea talk to people ask around and do a kind of a comparison and contrast sort of thing now keep in mind you're going to spray these cards out and even if you give them the, the legit code it's probably not going to be a hundred percent especially even if you go like what we do we do three coats of clear and make these things pop I mean it just was not the case back in the day they weren't this glossy so keep an, keep an, an understanding that I've, you know, I've gone to car shows before and if I see the very common color, which was very popular back in the 50s called uh, Strato Silver, and we've, we've painted cars Strato Silver, so it's very similar to this, this slate blue 
which is really nice. I can go to a car show and see two straddle silver cars next to each other and they look different. So you can't beat yourself up if you're slightly off from color. Uh, so that's why many times, you know, go with that newer code, the PPG cross-reference code, okay? If you don't want to go with that, you can always go through the body shop's books. They have books like this with swatches in them. I still have these books from years already. This is this is an old book. But, you know, they have all these swatches in here. And all these are modern day codes. And again, I like modern day codes because, God forbid, you ding a fender or you scratch something on your car and you have to get it repainted. If you give them the modern day code, this is going to be more friendly to them. And then it'll look, it'll match. They're not going to have, they're not going to struggle trying to match the paint if they have to do their own mixture. So go with a modern day color. So, I mean, this, look, there's a lot of colors. Straddle silver, right? This is a modern, I mean, this is very close. I mean, look at this. It's very close. And what's nice about some of these books, they got a slot right next to the color. So you can pick up the page and put your spray out card underneath and then take a comparison look. Yeah, it's a little darker, huh? Maybe that's not it. But again, don't look at these cards or the book indoors. I'm indoors right now, and, you know, this is fluorescent lighting. It's not a good representation of the color. You need to take the car, the color outside, actually, and do it and put it in natural light. And then see what it, see what it looks like in the sun. And then when you go out there, another rule of thumb, what I do is don't look at it flat. So pick, say you pick this color or something, or I, what I like to do is curl, curl the color, bend it a little bit, kind of give you a better idea, because the beetle is round, right? It's got rounded, you know, body panels on it, rounded fenders. Look at it like this, and then look at the sheen, look at the angles. The color changes when it's flat. This is flat. Now, the color changed. You bend it and do a curl, and all of a sudden it changes again. Metallics have many layers to the color. So from different angles, the color is going to look different with metallic. So keep that as a rule of thumb. So have them do spray outs. And the best way to do a spray out is on metal, as opposed to paper, which is what they usually have there. See if they have a, a, a piece of scrap metal that they can paint. So I had two colors sprayed on this one panel and I compared and contrast. I was almost leaning towards this color for the 61 I have here. But instead, he found another Subaru color that was very close to the silver granite that I like uh, that was offered in 54, 55 convertibles. So yeah, this is what I do. I go online, I find the year color, find the PPG cross-reference code, have them do a spray out on these cards. And then if I don't, if I like the spray out, maybe I do, maybe I don't, I might deviate slightly by looking at some other colors because that's the artist in me. Sometimes I like some other colors. Um, as long as like, I think with, you're within the 80 to 90, 95% color scheme of what the car had back then, you're okay. And uh, I don't think it's, you know, no one's going to hold a gun to your head and say, you know, oh, I got to fact check you. You didn't do this right. <laughs> Nobody's going to do that. And I'm also, like I said, I, I stay within the realm of the year of the Beetle, what was offered, maybe a couple years before, a couple years after, if you want. Would I paint this 55 um, Beetle ragtop threefold Clementine orange from 1970? Hell no, because that's way off. I would stay within the 50s, and, and whether I go with a metallic or... This is actually a split window color, Bordeaux red, and was only offered, I think, one year. But, you know, it's period. It still works. You know, just for me, like even the 61 color I picked here, this is a 50s color that I threw on a 61 Beetle. That glacier blue over there, I mean, that even works uh, for, you know... A year, a couple years before or even after, if you want. Um, you're not going to devalue too much unless you go way radical. You go pink, yeah, you're going you're gonna to deviate from value. Is the car numbers matching? 
If it's not, you got a little more creative elbow room, I say. You know, even if you are matching and you send away for the German birth certificate. I know I did a video on the German birth certificate, guys, and that link doesn't work anymore. Go to Google and type in VW German birth certificate. The new link comes up. And sometimes you get that birth certificate and they don't tell you the color. So to me, you know, you have some creative room to change the color if you'd like. It's not going to hurt the car too much as long as you do it tastefully and your color combination is good. So now when it comes down to color combination, say you pick your color. Now it comes down to combination, right? So I have this box here from Sofine and she's given me all these different materials and vinyl colors and you know, I sit down with my clients and we go through this and it might take weeks, sometimes longer for some people to make up their minds of what color they want. Like I would never use a yellow interior, you know, so there's things like that. So what you want to do is then you grab your colors, you know, your swatches here, and then you just basically start putting it up against your, your colors. That's the, that's the best route. Um, and, you know, this could rack your brain for a while, but this is the proper way to do it. And this is, you know, you don't want to make a mistake because if you order upholstery, you order material for your car, it usually cannot be changed. Once that order is in, that's it. It is in because sometimes it takes six to eight weeks to get your material all made up. And they don't really don't do returns. So if you make the mistake, um, fortunately, I think it's on you. Um, they're not going to do the return for you. Um, so... Um, you know, it's always a good idea to whatever upholstery place you're going to get your material from, call them up and tell them to send you a few swatches. And, you know, it might take some time. I know you're anxious, you're, you're excited, but do it right. Take your time, do your homework, and do this right. There are many, many solutions today to restoring your bug. So for this, I like this color. So again, rule of thumb, I like it if it's a darker car, I go with a lighter interior and vice versa. So... This was a, this is Tweed, again, on my seats. I love the way this looks. Yeah, Tweed wasn't offered, but you know what? It looks, period. It looks the part. It looks like it could have been offered back then. It's not so modern or radical to the point where it looks way, way off. This definitely looks the part. And I go with the same kind of stitching. I go with the same kind of, you know, um, a design that they would have had with two-tone you know, with the doors and, and such. I put the chrome trim on the doors to mimic what they had in the 50s. So it works. And again, you know, th this is not going to deviate too much away from the value of the Beetle. Um, the Beetle, again, is not a Duesenberg. It's not some of the high-end muscle car stuff that really requires numbers matching things uh, or period to the spec. You want to go that route? More power to you. And I've done it before. It's fine. Uh, but I, I'll be honest, some color combinations that Volkswagen did themselves back in the day, I'm not a fan of. You know, they might have a Strato, Strato Silver Beetle, which I love Strato Silver, and then they have a blue interior with it. I'm not a huge fan of that. Some people, that it's okay. You know, they're okay with it, and they want to go back to period. But I try to, again, I'm always thinking in the future if I have to sell my vehicles. And I think most people should do that too. You know, think of the audience. What would the audience want? I know you want what you want, but it's always a good rule of thumb is there's always going to become a t uh, come a time where you have to, um, you know, sell your vehicle. So you want to get the most out of what you put in it, no? So, um, you know, if you're going to go hot pink, uh, that, might, that might be a problem. <laughs> you want to go... I, look, I, my, my 70 convertible Beetle, uh, I sold for a great price, and I painted that car the copper, a copper color, copper orange, um, and it was a, um, I think it was a Nissan color I used, and I put like that uh, black interior, but not just a plain black interior, it had an espresso cloth interior, and it went for a top price, higher than what most 70 convertibles will ever do. If I would have went back to Yukon yellow with the black interior, I would have never gotten to that price, what I sold it for. So, um, beetles have some creative elbow room. So, I stay within realm, color, combo, make it look vintage, make it work, guys. This is what I do. I hope this wasn't too long-winded for you. And if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, please be sure to leave it in the comment section below. 
And please be sure to like, subscribe, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Guys, happy Thanksgiving. This is uh, November 2020. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And I hope you guys are well and safe and healthy. Um, I know we're probably going to be limited with our families and such this holiday, but uh, just be thankful, be grateful for what you have. I mean, geez, if you got a vintage Volkswagen and you're touring around and you're driving around, you got to be pretty, pretty thankful for that. So I'm thankful for what I have. So, uh, all right, guys, be well, be safe, and I will speak to you next time. Thank you.